Welcome into Mock Trial Masterclass, your guide to controlling the courtroom. I'm Luke, and I want you to be a Mock Trial Master. Let's talk about how you can make that happen. One of the hardest things for people who are new to mock trial is writing a good cross-examination. Now, I have lots of videos on my channel and I talk about in my book all sorts of rules for cross-examinations, what you should and should not include in your questions, what to look for as you're phrasing your questions. But what I haven't ever done is just looked at a witness statement with you guys and talked about how you would write a good cross-examination based on that witness statement and what my process would be looking at that statement. So that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. I'm gonna take a witness statement from an old Tennessee high school mock trial case just because those witness statements tend to be shorter and much easier to deal with in a situation like this. And we're gonna break it down and talk through exactly what my process would be in forming questions to cross-examine this witness. Before we hop in, I wanna remind you that if you have any questions at all about mock trial, any topics you want to see me cover in a future video, leave a comment below. I'd be happy to help you out with a video. All right, let's dive in. The witness we're going to look at in this video is a police detective who, to put it mildly, did a really bad job with their investigation as a part of this case. And when I'm dealing with a cross-examination of any kind, whether it's an easier one like this or one that might be a little more challenging, a witness who didn't do quite as bad of a job, but you still have to cross them to get your points in mock trial, uh, I'm gonna go through the witness statement looking for anything at all that I think I can cross them on. The thing to keep in mind here as you're doing this is you're not just looking for blatantly negative things. And we're gonna see plenty of that as we look at this witness. But not every cross-examination is going to be full of 50 questions like, you didn't investigate this, and, and you messed that up, and you were too quick on that. Sometimes you have to dig just a little bit deeper on facts that are going to make good fodder, good material for cross-examination. And we're going to take a look at a few examples of that here. So. I'll pull up the affidavit for you, the witness statement here for Deputy Riley Fife, which I'm guessing is an homage to Barney Fife from Andy Griffith. And we're going to take a look at a few of the things that I've highlighted looking at this very short witness statement. These, again, are things that I have identified as potential cross points for this witness. So for a little bit of context, this case was about a scooter crash and whether it was caused by a giant a uh, party trailer, like a, a party wagon type of thing that you would typically see in downtown Nashville with tourists jumping around, uh, men and women in swimsuits and a pool, you know, that type of thing. Uh, there had been some sand that fell out of this trailer. And the whole big, big question in this case is, did the trailer cause the scooter crash? So here's what this police officer found as they started to investigate that. Here's a few points. But now they've started taking them, them being the, these trailers, to the street. At first they had these bicycle contraptions rigged up to a trailer, and you'd see 20 people pedaling a trailer, acting like fools. That was bad enough, but now they've got transportainment, which is this type of uh, giant vehicle we're dealing with. I've spoken at Metro Council meetings at least a dozen times, asking for them to be outlawed. Uh, Council has passed some regulations, but not nearly enough. I take enforcement of these regulations seriously. I write as many citations to these people as I can, all perfectly legal and perfectly deserving, but I've written more transportation citations than anyone at the sheriff's office. You know what all of this tells me? This dude is extremely biased, and he is in no position to speak objectively about this type of trailer that the defendant owned. It's riddled with bias. He's written more citations for these things than anyone else at the legal office. Uh, he hates them. He, he says they're not doing enough. He just doesn't like them. So he's, before he even starts investigating, he's starting from that point of things. Not good at all. All right, let's look at some more highlights. I took some samples, but I'm sure it was the sand that had fallen off the wagon. Now, again, I told you some sand had fallen off this wagon. We're trying to see, did this sand, did this wagon cause the crash? And it's good, right? He took some samples. But what was the result of the samples? <laughs> it just says, I took some samples, but I'm sure it was the sand that fallen off. Well, did you test the samples, detective? Right, and, and that's the thing too, as you're looking through these witness statements, is you gotta be able to ask yourself, not only just what is there, but what is not there? And in this case, what is not there is any kind of investigation of these samples that he took. Did you go to a geologist? Did, did the state hire anybody to, to you know, uh, forensically look at these samples? No, it's just, well, I took a sample, but, uh, but I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, that's great, but I'm sure is not really a legal standard, detective. Right? That's a problem. Okay, next highlight. I barely remember what cat, Cat McNable is the victim in this case. 
as I was really distracted by his missing front teeth. What kind of investigator is this? He's asking the victim of the crime questions. He's interviewing them. And he says, I barely remember what they said because I was distracted by their missing front teeth. Who are we dealing with here? This is terrible. It affects his credibility so badly. A few more. Let's go through. I was just sure this was a case of the awful sandwagon being a menace to society and creating danger. Okay, this is even more the bias that we're talking about earlier, but we also have him here jumping to conclusions. Right? He didn't listen to these interviews that he's doing because he's just sure. We have more examples of that coming up. Mickey Faye thought the scooter was going too fast, but I didn't care what he said. He's probably half blind. A lot of the locals don't like scooters. You know who else doesn't like these things? You don't like these things. So who's probably biased anyway? That's rich coming from this guy. But also, we have the bias on one hand, but then we also have he's not listening to the people he interviewed, or, or she, I guess, Deputy Five could be a she, played by a she. Uh, they're not listening to the people they interviewed. How crazy is this? I interviewed Lane Goodner. Lane, as it turns out, saw the whole thing and called 911. Lane also took a photo of the scooter and gave it to me. Okay, where's this photo? Do we have the photo as part of the case? What did Lane Goodner say, right? And we start to see, too, that... There's just a lot of questions that weren't really asked by this guy. He did a really terrible job with this case. And then I concluded my investigation by citing the transportainment wagon for being at fault for operating on a road not designed for transportainment vehicles. Based on what? <laughs> That's the thing, too. Again, you got to think about what's not here. This is an investigator investigating a crime, and he charged someone with a crime based on a hunch that wasn't backed up by any of the evidence that we just saw there. And before you start to wonder, well, did anybody actually call this witness? They seem bad. Yes, we ran into schools that called this witness. And it was a pretty easy cross, I gotta say, but that is where you're starting when writing a cross-examination, is material like this. What are the parts of the affidavit that, in some of these cases, are just awful, but maybe even in lesser situations are gonna help your side of the case based on what is or what is not there. Now, that gives you kind of your, your, your general points, your ideas that you want to make, but how do you go about forming those into questions and creating a good cross-examination? We're about to talk about that, but first, I want to let you know that if you want me to come help coach your team over Zoom, I'd be happy to do that. I coach teams all over the country. I help out one-on-one -on -one with students, with coaches on upping their games, and I also do group coaching for teams. If you want to book an appointment with me, you can click the link in the description on YouTube or in the show notes on podcast platforms. I would love to spend some time with your team. All right, so what do you do once you've gotten to this point of highlighting the parts of the witness statement that you can cross on? Well, it's a matter of formulating that stuff into good questions. Now, I have plenty of other videos on the channel that talk about what makes a good cross question, but to summarize it quickly, a good cross question is gonna be short and to the point. It's gonna be very precise. It's not gonna have any kind of vague language. The answer must be yes. And it's gonna avoid using fillers like, isn't that true, isn't that correct? Because you really don't need those things. You can most of the time just state your cross questions like a statement. You don't need to say, it was red, correct. You can just say, it was red, and have the witness agree with you. So that's what makes a good cross question, but that doesn't really get us where we need because we still got to organize our material. And so what I like to do at this point, once I've highlighted everything, is I'll get a sheet of paper or I'll get a Microsoft Word document, and I will write down all of those facts that I highlighted and get them in a list. And then now that I can look at them in a list format like that, I'm going to ask myself, okay, what buckets can we put those questions into? Are there any themes running their way through this? I think there were two major themes in what we just looked at. The first theme is bias, this information that very clearly makes this detective a biased detective, the fact that he hates these types of vehicles. Then the other issue is the problems with his investigation. So we have two very easy buckets there, problems with the investigation and bias. But because the brain likes threes, I'm always going to, as I'm writing across, going to try to find three buckets. So what I'm thinking, seeing here now is, what if we turned that problems with the investigation bucket into bad things he did and bad things he didn't do? So we talk about the things he did that stunk. You know, he took this bad sand sample, you know, all these things in here. And then the things he didn't do, the people he didn't talk to, the evidence he didn't collect. Uh, another thing, just you know, at the top of my mind, thing he did is is not listen to people during these interviews. He sat through these interviews and he didn't listen to anybody. That's terrible. So 
Now we kind of have those three buckets, and those are gonna be our main points of our cross-examination. So I'll write them on a sheet of paper, and I will literally, at the top of each heading, write for either myself or for my students, what is the purpose of this section? Because cross-examination, sometimes you're gonna have to think on your feet, sometimes you're gonna have to adjust your questions on the fly, and so you always need to be focused on what are you trying to accomplish here? What is the goal uh, of this particular part of the cross-examination? So here's an example of that, how I write that out. And then once you get to that point, it really is a matter of getting the questions as short as possible, giving yourself enough time so that your attorney can be in the well and be the star of the show, and making sure those questions don't have fillers, making sure there's no real way that the witness can run around from them. And once you've done that, you're in position for a really good cross-examination. So to kind of recap what we did here, I will take a witness statement for a cross and I'll go through and highlight the issues I want to cross on, looking both for what is there and also asking critical questions about what's not here that really should be here that we can ask the witness about. Then I'm going to take that information and I'm going to see are there any categories that these naturally fall into, any buckets that I can put them into, any themes emerging among these facts. And once I get to that point, I'm going to say, you know, what order do I want to hit those themes, those topics in? And then I'm going to start writing my questions using some of the advice I talk about in my other videos. If you do that, your cross-examinations will rise to the level of a mock trial master.